agents of change. After almost 20 years of apparent peace, in 1938 Europe was on the brink of a crisis that would unfold on a bloody battlefield. The tension was palpable. Germany, already under Nazi control, didn't accept the position of powerlessness in which the Treaty of Versailles had demanded, and didn't accept being cut off from the group of superpowers. But these were the consequences of the defeats suffered during the First World War. The punitive conditions of peace only strengthened the German nationalist sentiment, which found its fullest expression in the Nazi party, of which Hitler was in charge. With Hitler in power, repeated violations of the peace of 1919 soon began, the most drastic of which was the rearmament, a clear sign of indignation and implicit manifestation of subversion against the order that for 15 years had crystallized in European territory. Taking advantage of the fact that the Anglo-French showed no desire to start another world war and tended to recognize some concessions to Germany, Hitler made lots of demands. After having illegally annexed Austria without any armed reaction by the European powers, in 1938 the Munich Agreement gave the National Socialist free reign over the Sudetenland, leaving the Czech nation vulnerable to complete German domination. The appeasement policy carried out by the major powers in the European chessboard was consuming the population which, at the mercy of the increasingly absurd German demands, starved. Bread was black and so hard that even the ants couldn't eat it, and the heavy product from milk to soap cost much more to bear the costs of the poor policies. People used to buy many small animals like guinea pigs and chickens to obtain meat, fat and hides to sell. To earn some money, they went to the wealthier classes' lavish houses, also better but famine, and traded cigarettes for potatoes. Children built dams from which they took out all the water to collect the fish that remained on the bottom. Fish, however, were not the only ones to be trapped. In those years, the situation for the Jews was tragic, ending up under the watch of the SS without any logical explanation but only because of a dictator's selfish madness, the European Jews were trapped without escape. The anti-Semitic pogroms didn't only take place in Germany, but they expanded at the Nazis' occupied new lands. In December 1938, only a few months after the agreement to capitulate Czechoslovakia at the mercy of the Nazis, Sir Nicholas Winton, a 29-year-old stockbroker, inexorably tied his fate to the fate of many Jewish Czechoslovakian children. Winton skipped a planned Swiss ski vacation to visit a friend who was working with refugees in the western area of the Czechoslovakia fallen under German control. It was during this visit that Winton witnessed firsthand the dire situation of the country refugees camps, which were overfilled with Jewish families and other political prisoners. Appalled by what he saw and aware that an effort was underway to organize a mass evacuation of Jewish children from Austria and Germany to England, Winton moved quickly to replicate a similar rescue effort in Czechoslovakia, defining in this way his war enterprise. Working initially without any group's authorization, Winton received forms in his hotel room from parents trying to get their children out of Czechoslovakia. Thousands of families queued outside his store, believing that their case war was the most urgent. With the case files in hand, Winton then returned to England to put the operation together. He wrote letters to governments, created new documents for children, collected the necessary money, and sold families interested in hosting children to newspaper announcements. Whatever cost these donations did then cover, Winton paid for out of his own pocket. On March the 14, 1939, just hours before Adolf Hitler and the German Nazis to Czechoslovakia, the first train carrying Winton rescued children left the country. Over the course of the next five months, Winton and his small team organized seven other successful evacuation trains. In all, 669 children made it to safety. Winton used to rejoice for every child rescued, but then he suddenly realized that for every Jewish child arrived safely in England, there were hundreds still stuck in Czechoslovakia. 
However, a nine train which was set to leave on September the 1st never departed. On that date, Hitler invaded Poland and closed off all borders under German control, igniting the Second World War and bringing Winton's rescue war to an end. This is Giulia Peroni from Brescia, Italy, for the Agents of Change podcast. For the world goes to where we take it.